Right, guys, I think we're a minute or two past now, so I think we'll uh, we'll probably kick off. So welcome, welcome everyone to um, Dodging the Silver Bullets, so our webinar um, on omni-channel vendors. Is it good or just good marketing? Um, hopefully, if you can all hear me, hear me okay. Um, if you plus out the button on the right hand side, it's the little arrow. Um, if you plus that out, if you've got any problems with audio. Um, if you plus that out, uh, there is a hand, little hand icon where you can raise a hand just to let you know if there's any problems. Um, also, uh, please do think of some questions. Um, we've got a bit of a question and answer session at the end of this webinar, and you know, so if you think of those again, that um, uh, that section on the right hand side there, that's where you can type those questions out. So towards the end of the presentation, we'll, we'll be taking questions and see if we can answer those as best we can. The webinar is going to last around sort of 25, 25 minutes, probably no more than that. Um, right, well, so we'll just uh, we'll just crack on. So, so this presentation, dodging a silver bullet. We, we first um, did this presentation at the UK uh, Credit and Collections Conference, um, which was held in um, Stratford um, a couple of weeks ago. And so, the type of audience members who were there uh, were from financial services organisations such as debt collection agencies. There were also some uh, motor um, financial services organisations there as well, and so we were given this particular title as a bit of a challenge, you know, because as my colleague Adam Rasbone in the solutions uh, in a solutions world, many different financial services organisations have been given the sales pitch, uh, the full-on sales pitch about an omni-channel being a solution, being able to solve um, a huge amount of problems, and being, the, and as we say, the, the silver bullet um, to communication. And so what we wanted to do is, is to challenge that, challenge that concept and, and answer this and answer this question. Now the first thing we wanted to do um, was to um, let's make sure these slides are working. There we go. The first thing we wanted to do is define omnichannel uh, as, a, as a concept. Um, you know what does it what does it really mean? Um, you know because when we've uh, we could ask a, a lot of people in a room and a little bit like the term big data if you ask them what the definition of omnichannel is i imagine you would get very very many different answers to that um and so when we did this uh, uh this presentation at the conference i sort of found the very best definition that, that i could find and so so here goes and this is this is a reading off a particular website um, called hotspot omnichannel experience is a multi-channel approach to marketing selling and serving customers in a way that creates an integrated and cohesive customer experience, no matter how or where a customer reaches out. Um, so that definition, free to search, what is omnichannel online, and you'll find you know, dozens of different definitions. Um, but the point that we wanted to make when looking at defining omnichannel is it doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly the same as providing or different to providing multi-channel communication. And we certainly didn't think that omnichannel meant that you had a fantastic mobile banking app. Um, and so what we wanted to do was show you what we thought to be a model answer for uh, what omnichannel really is. And the best uh, answer to that we thought was Amazon. Um, when you think about, I imagine those of you on this webinar uh, use Amazon throughout their lives, and it doesn't matter which channel, so which product that you would use, it doesn't matter how you interact with them. Um, the, the, the customer experience is absolutely integrated. You can uh, uh, um, take off where you might have left a previous interaction on a different channel, moving from different products. And now that Amazon are testing actual bricks and mortar retail stores, they're looking to bring that experience also to the high street as well. And so, when we thought about the financial organisations, this is your beacon. This this is the bar that has been set uh, in terms of an omnichannel experience. And so, if a financial services organisation wanted to implement uh, a model answer such as Amazon, um, what challenges? What challenges might they find when implementing that? Um, and of course, the first challenge, the most obvious, it is massively expensive. This is not just the the cost of the vendors that you would have to pay in license fees. Um, this is also the cost of the, the, the training for staff, um, the huge amount of um, uh, implementation that goes along with that, which is our which is our next slide. 
it's hugely difficult to implement because many organizations are working with legacy systems which have to be re-engineered to allow the flowing of data about an individual um, between them. And I think this is the reason why, certainly in the in the banking era, that many of the challenger uh, the challenger brands in that area have stolen a march on the traditional players is because they built their systems from scratch rather than having to re-engineer um, old legacy systems. So it's a hugely expensive, very, very difficult to implement. Um, but also in a financial services context, sometimes it's not always appropriate. Um, one of the examples that we had at the, the, the conference was a discussion around a income and expenditure survey. Is it really appropriate for the experience, an omni-channel experience to be applied to something like an in income and expenditure um, uh, survey? Because once you switch channels, you must be authenticated. There must be an ID identification and security verification to that. Um, and can you do that seamlessly between one channel and another? And the, the final challenge that we thought, which was probably the most important, is omnichannel what your customers really want? That's a, that's a really big question because one of the things that we talked about at the conference uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of the suggestions from the audience is, well, if you are, a, for example, a debt collection agency, is that type of relationship with someone who is someone who is trying to recover debt that you might owe, is an omnichannel relationship what they really, really want? And in many, and that is a, an open-ended question, which in many cases is very, very difficult to answer. But it's certainly something that we feel that organisations should be asking themselves. Is it what your customers really want? And so along with all of those challenges that are related to implementing a non-channel experience, um, an even bigger challenge is the fact that the customer expectations are absolutely rising. So, so uh, um, this particular uh, survey that you can see on screen here came from a, a survey called the Wonderment uh, survey. Uh, and it was a consumer research of, um, uh, of thousands of thousands of consumers, and we asked them what they really thought uh, they were the, the type of relationship they would like with their brand. Um, and what really came out of it was that no longer are brands being compared to their peers, so a bank compared to another bank or a utilities company compared to another utilities company. What you're being compared against in your customer experience is the best brands in the world. And that top line there, customer expensing, expecting a gaffer level ease of use. Now I had to look this up. Uh, gaffer um, um, is an acronym covering Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. And so the, the user experience, the customer experience that you have with each one of those global players, that is what you're being compared against uh, globally. And so some of the, the stats here, you know, 61% believe that the best brands make their lives easier. 90% want the brands to push the boundaries. And, you know, 74% say brands can set new standards by providing higher levels of customer service. And so we've outlined all of the challenges with Omnichannel and how difficult that is to implement for different organizations, especially that key question of, is it what your customers really want? But also you've got to meet the challenge. You've got to meet the challenge of higher and rising customer expectations. And so our response is, are there alternatives? Of course, what alternatives are there for providing uh, better customer experience to try and meet this challenge of higher customer expectations? And so that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go through some alternatives um, to, um, to that omni-channel experience. So first is, can you engage with your communication, however rudimentary that communication is. Um, and so one example here is, can you take what is a, um, a notification service via SMS, and can you engage your customers um, better uh, by providing them something to engage with? Uh, and one example that we've got here is, is rich SMS landing pages. That's where you can take a fairly straightforward um, rich S uh, text message, uh, and then provide a link through to a very simple stripped down landing page, which provides them with greater engagement, something better to look at. Um, and what we've been doing over the past uh, few months with some of our customers is finding that even though this 
um, this is actually providing with a link to push, the, the engagement levels are actually rising when we look at customers uh, versus a, a standard SMS. And so if you can make that engagement, sorry, make that communication much more engaging, uh, you're more likely to get uh, people being um, interacting with you. The second example is mobile web applications. Um, and at the conference, we saw a, a presentation by behavioral psychologist, which talks about removing friction um, from the customer experience. And this is something which we feel really plays into that, that concept. Um, so what we've, we've been working with different organizations is something called mobile web applications, where we take a very straightforward tactical, um, um, uh, tactical objective, such as making a payment, and we reduce that, that objective, we reduce the friction down to such a level that we make, we're taking customers from A to B as quickly as possible, removing all of the barriers and all of the reasons why they might not complete that payment. Key to this is the, the data that must drive uh, this communication. So as you can see on the far left screen, we've got Hello Mr. Rathbank, so it understands it's data driven, it understands um, the person that they're actually providing this information to and then gets them in five screens from, would you like to make it, you have an outstanding balance, would you like to make the payment, please put in your details, and thank you very much for your payment. Reducing that friction will increase your engagement levels. It will feel like to your customers that you're providing them with that gaffer level experience because it is so easy and it's so quick. So definitely think about ways in which you can do that to reduce the, reduce the friction. And finally, uh, sorry, not finally, penultimately, uh, we've also recently introduced um, mobile letters in our mobile web applications uh, ecosystem. Um, this is a very new innovation for us, but we're really excited, and so are and many of our customers, in being, providing the same concept of frictionless experience by driving it through data. Hello, John Smith, we're just going to confirm who you are. Would you like to download this particular uh, statement, for example? in a debt, debt recovery situation. Now, as the obvious cost saving here is the, 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 the printing and posted costs of the letters. But for me, the, 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 uh, the more important concept here is we're removing friction. And we're making the customer experience even better by providing that kind of quite rich information, a full letter, providing it in something in a, in a channel and in a way which makes it easier, uh, easier for the customers. So now on to the final part, the final piece, is something called RCS. So at our conference a couple of weeks ago, we had a room of around 40, 45 people. And I asked uh, a show of hands, a show of hands as to how many people had come across the term RCS or rich communication services. Out of those 40, 45 people, there was one um, that actually provided, that knew what that was. And so I'm going to take you through that today. So RCS is the next generation of SMS messaging provided by Google and Android. And uh, the, the, the networks in the UK, including Vodafone, have also developed a very, very uh, developed RCS as a, as a technology. And essentially what it's doing is, is it's taking the, the levels of engagement you can have with SMS messaging um, from what you might see now, which is a very straightforward text message, which you can put a link in there, as we showed earlier on with the landing page. It's taking it from 160 characters. With that, a link in there, it's taken from that to this. So RCS uh, is a new way of SMS messaging reaching the customer's handset. There's a few things here um, that I can, I can uh, take you through as to some of the key elements of, of RCS. The history of it is it's developed, um, the technology is being developed by the mobile networks um, uh, um, uh, authority, the GMSA, and together with the likes of Google, the likes of Vodafone in the UK, they developed that technology to meaning that when somebody receives an SMS on the handset, it's now a lot better, a lot more engaging, a lot richer than what you might see right now on their SMS messaging application. And so, especially for the financial services sector, um, the verified sender there in the top right-hand corner is a crucial element to trust, building trust for consumers when they receive a message from a particular brand. There is a, a, a sender verification process with the likes of Vodafone, with the likes of Google, 
uh, to register uh, your brand to ensure that when somebody receives that, when they see that verified sender, they are absolutely sure it is coming from the brand that it says. Um, on uh, the left hand side, down at the bottom there, there is some interesting innovations around suggested replies. We feel this is going to completely change engagement levels because rather than asking the customer to, to think for themselves and type out what they would like, you can actually put in suggested reply buttons, uh, which will aid that conversation and make the communication really quick and really easy. Um, there's also additional reporting that comes with it. So rather than a what SMS messaging gives you right now, which is a delivery receipt, has it reached the handset? Um, the reporting RCS will actually be able to give you a read receipt uh, for the very first time. We're really, really excited about, about this new innovation in messaging, um, making the conversational aspect to messaging um, uh, fantastic. And so we've got a couple of examples here where we've mocked up um, what that SMS messaging might look like uh, when applied with the RCS technology. I'll just start, start these videos off uh, so you can have a bit, bit, of a, uh, a, bit of a look, but we've got a, a Cactus Energy uh, in a utility space here, we've also got a utilities company. But on the right and on the left hand side, there you can see um, you can see how that journey might look like. So, acting on behalf of General Loans, do you have a couple of minutes? Yes, I do. And this can be achieved either through having a uh, a live human uh, using a chat solution, or it can actually be put through um, AI technology uh, to allow suggested replies using um, APIs. Uh, you can have a verification within there. Um, and also you can have uh, huge amounts of different ways in which you can uh, take that information. Uh, I'll just play the others too so I can just see, see those coming through. Um, and as I say, we, we see this um, really starting to accelerate in terms of the, the technology um, towards the end of this year and in, into the beginning of next. Um, a notification service um, is available right now on the Vodafone network and uh, we feel this is going to only grow um, as we move through 2019. There's a few things here which really does aid engagement. So I don't know whether you saw it just previously there on the Crescent Media, but you can have an integration into your calendar um, on, on, the particular, on the particular phone. So obviously playing all these three, there's a lot going on, so I'll probably we'll move on from here. But if you have any, any questions, uh, if you'd like any further information, as I'll say on the, on the final slide, we'll be more than happy to take you through. And so just to wrap up, I say we're, we're coming up to about 20 minutes now, as, as I thought. So just to wrap up, we feel if there was one thing we'd like to take you to take away um, uh, from this particular webinar, if you don't do anything else, it's um, very much to take this back to your organisations. Is how to how do you get your customer experience interactive? Um, I think with the modern way of, of interacting with uh, with friends, uh, in particular uh, through the messaging channels, if you can get that experience interactive you are much, like, much more likely to get uh, better customer experiences and better engagement, more akin to that GAFA level experience. And so it's almost our mission uh, to eradicate those emails that you get from brands where it says, please do not reply. Um, you know, we want to eradicate those completely because we feel that if you can get that customer, customer experience interactive, that engagement will go up, the results will get better, um, and ultimately the customer will be happier. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll um, just plus out to see if we've got any questions uh, that have come from from anybody attending. So we've not got any so far, but I would like, I thought what we would do is go through a question that came from the conference last week, um, sorry, a couple of weeks ago. And the question was, uh, what about other channels uh, like WhatsApp? Um, you know, how are they going to interplay between SMS messaging uh, between RCS in particular, um, and that actually came. Uh, um, that is a really very very interesting question. That that channel right now is something we can, from a Sendex point of view, can support right now. And so customers wanting to use WhatsApp, um, uh, they can engage with us. We can take them through uh, the registration process because there are. Um, as with any other different channel, there are a few restrictions um, on use case, you know, what type of use case is it, but um, we feel that what we're going to design is, a, um, is an, ecosystem, an ecosystem of messaging channels where ideally you'll be giving us 
uh, organizations will be giving us the telephone number, the content of the message that they would like to send to their customers, and then we will do the rest. If we can provide that down um, channels such as WhatsApp, such as RCS, such as standard SMS messaging, um, then we will, we will do that on our behalf. Uh, the only thing we need to know is what to send and, and where to send it, and that's ultimately what we're aiming for. Okay, I've got another question coming through. I've got one from the audience. We've got, um, what about Apple? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a really good question. Um, Apple is launching its own business-to-person messaging channel, um, and that is called Apple Business Chat. Um, again, that is something we're also investigating with, with Apple itself um, and taking customers who would like to use that as a channel, um, especially in the UK where the... the um, you know, where the proportion of Apple handsets is, is, is quite high in, in comparison to Android handsets. Um, so, so yes, we're, we're currently in conversation with Apple and, and that is something which, again, any customers who are interested in that can um, uh, can talk to their account manager, talk, talk to us and we'll be really, really happy. Uh, as I say, that it's, it's almost like a bit of a follow-on um, uh, question to the one that we had before about different channels. Ultimately, what we want is rich API technology and API being um, assistant generated um, uh, system generated message requests from, from you guys. Um, so you can send us a message and we will have those rich APIs, meaning that all you have to do is send, send us that content once and we will do the rest, um, almost like a one size fits all um, approach to that. Okay, I don't think we've got any other questions coming through. Uh, so I'd just like to, to finish off that by saying if you'd like a free, a free consultation um, or an RTS demonstration with to see that I can help, we've got a contact us there, sales at um, But otherwise, thank you very much for joining and hopefully speak to you soon.